Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to CIE Automotive India Limited 4QCY23 results call hosted by ICIC Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask question after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Basudev Banerjee from ICIC Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hi, thanks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, first locations to all the participants. Uh, thanks to uh, PI India Auto Limited Management for uh, giving us the opportunity to host the call. Uh, we have uh, here in the call the senior management represented by Mr. Andrew Alvarez, CEO, Mr. K. Jayaprakas, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Vikas Sina, Senior VP Strategy, Mr. Uroid Lapoint, Business Controller, and Mr. Sopnil Sodagar, TGM Strategy. So uh, over to the uh, senior management uh, to take over. Yes, yeah. yeah. thanks, thanks, Vasudev. Uh, good morning, all. I welcome all of you on this call, as also uh, Mr. Ander Aranatra, as CEO. Uh, we will present CIE India results for Q4 C23 and full year C23. Uh, I will refer you to the presentation that we have uploaded. Uh, let me begin with an overview of the company. And if you refer to page 5 of that presentation, it shows the legal structure of the company. In CY23, the name was changed to CIE Automotive India. Sale of the subsidiaries of CIE Forgings Germany, namely our truck forgings business in Europe, was completed in October 2023, but was effective from 1st July 2023. All the German forgings operations, assets and liabilities were categorized as assets and liabilities held for sale and classified as discontinued operations. Pages 6, 7 and 8 of the same presentation provide a bird's eye view of our company. CI Automotive India is a large diversified auto components group with presence across many processes, product lines, locations and customers. We now start with results of the India operations for Q4 C23 on page 10. The quarter was a mixed bag from the market point of view. Tractors suffered a double digit drop versus the same quarter last year. Trucks were negative and light vehicles showed modest growth. The bright spot was two-wheelers, which after struggling for the last few quarters showed robust growth. Sales at INR 13.9 billion were 4% higher year-on-year, year, largely in line with weighted average market growth. The India operations achieved an EBITDA margin of 16.5% in Q4 C23 versus a recurrent EBITDA margin of 15.7% in Q4 C22 and an EBITDA margin of 16.7% in Q3 C23. Please note that the recurrent EBITDA margin of 15.7% in Q4 C22 is calculated after deducting a one-time profit of INR 378 million on land sale in that quarter. The Indian operations continue to retain EBITDA margins in spite of uneven market growth. On page 11, we have the Q4 C23 results for our European operations. Sales of INR 7.3 billion in Q4 C23 are same year on year versus Q4 C22 and slightly higher than Q3 C23 sequentially. While the European production grew 7% in the quarter, this was largely due to Eastern Europe. Production in Western Europe grew nearly by 3%. As explained in, uh, in earlier calls, Metro Castello is experiencing a decline since last two quarters due to drop in the US market. Both these factors have led to stagnation in sales figures in Europe in this quarter on a year-on-year -year basis. EBITDA margin in Q4 C23 was 16.9% versus 14.5% in Q4 C22 and 17.2% in Q3 C23. Uh, as energy costs stabilize, EBITDA margins have consolidated around 17% and EBIT margin is around 13%. On page 12, we see the consolidated CIE India Q4 C23 results. Consolidated sales were INR 21.3 billion, which was 3% higher year on year. EBITDA INR 3.54 billion and EBIT INR 2.76 billion, both of which were roughly same year on year. And EBT of INR 
four five billion, which was slightly lower. Please note that EBITDA, EBIT, and EBT numbers of Q4 T22 include an amount of INR 378 million on the one-time profit on land sale. So the last year numbers are higher uh, because of this land sale. The full year C23 results for our Indian operations are on page 14. Sales increased by 5% versus C22 to INR 55.3 billion. Automotive market growth in India in C23 was uneven across segments, quarters and customers. Light vehicles grew reasonably, but two-wheelers and tractors were underwhelming. The first quarter was good, followed by a muted second quarter, but the festive season was encouraging. The performance of our key customers was also mixed, with some suffering negative or flat demand growth. We had reported last year that all the business verticals were expanding capacity. There was a delay in ramp up of some of these orders, especially at CIE Hosur and aluminium verticals, and this impacted our sales growth. We have positive expectations from these orders in C24. The EBITDA margin of 16.7%, EBIT margin of 12.8%, and EBT margin of 12.2% are all higher than C22. EBITDA and EBIT were higher year on year by 10% and 12% respectively. And we expect to regain growth momentum in India by incrementally improving margins. On page 15, we have the full year results of C23 for our European operations. With sales of INR 32.8 billion, there has been a 10% growth vis a vis full year C22, largely in line with underlying market growth. Q1 C23 sales growth was strong, but the rest of the quarters were very key. Positive exchange rate impact was offset by steep price increases. EBITDA margin in C23 was 17.8% versus 14.5% in C22. EBIT margin 14.5% versus 114 And EBIT margin 12.2% versus 10.9. EBITDA and EBIT were higher year on year by 35% and 40% respectively in absolute terms. While the market forecasts in Europe are muted, we are quite optimistic about our European business, which has high margins, high returns, and and very good cash generation. On page 15, we have the C23 consolidated results for CIA India. Sales for INR 88.1 billion, which is a growth of 7% versus C22. EBITDA margin was 17.1% versus 15.4% in C22. EBIT 13.4% versus 11.8. And EBT 12.2 versus 11.6. As explained earlier, the EBITDA, EBIT and EBT the num uh, margins and numbers for C22 include that one-time profit uh, from land sale, which I have repeated quite a few times. The consolidated PAT in C23 is INR 11.25 billion versus negative INR 1.36 billion uh, in C22. The C23 pack includes profit from discontinued CFD operations that I had explained earlier of INR 3.275 billion. Adjusting for this, the recurrent consolidated pack in C23 was INR 7.976 billion uh, at 9.1% of consolidated sales. Likewise, the adjusted consolidated pack for C22 was INR 6.735 billion after adjusting the loss of INR 8.475 billion from discontinued operations and the gain of INR 378 million from land sale in India. Thus, recurrent PAT in C23 grew by 18.4%. You know, as we said, the recurrent consolidated PAT in C23 is INR 7.976 billion. The recurrent PAT in C22 was 6.735 billion. And this is the growth of 18.4%. And this has been achieved when the sales have grown only by 7%. So even in a year of uneven sales growth across geographies, market segments, and customers, CI India has delivered an impressive bottom line growth. On page 18, you will see our abridged consolidated balance sheet, which shows the healthy state of CI India. Return on net assets is 21.3%. The first time we have crossed the 20% mark. Return on equity is 18.8%. And ROE of continued operations is 13.3. Net financial debt is negative, INR 8.2 billion. So net financial debt is negative. The cash flows are shown on page 19. The company generated operating cash flows to the extent of 60% of consolidated EBITDA. Growth capex was INR 2.9 billion. 
80% of which was spent on projects in India. Overall capex was INR 4.57 billion, which is 5.2% of consolidated, which is in line with the norms. Overall cash flow generation was INR 9.7 billion, but this includes cash received from the CFD sales process of INR 3.76 billion. The board of the company recommended a dividend payment of rupees per share, including approval in the AGM schedule later in the year. This is double the payout made in the last two years. Section 3 of our presentation outlines our strategy. A combination of the following principles sets us apart from others, namely, make operations world class, diversify customer base, plant locations and technologies, invest in a disciplined manner, continuously improve profitability, decentralize plant management and focus on ESG. Diversification is key to our aspirations. In India, we are present in seven technologies, four market segments and more than 50 customers, out of which 20, 20 plus of those customers are with annual sales of more than INR 500 million or 50 crores. This not only enables us to manage the volatility in sales at some of our anchor customers, but the portfolio approach helps us in protecting margins. Our disciplined approach to capital expenditure is encapsulated in a few key guidelines and that is outlined in the presentation. We focus on improving productivity levels at our plants through a variety of projects, namely optimizing plant layouts, automating machines and material handling, improving cycle times, eliminating unnecessary operations and manning, and digitizing data capture. Teams from CI Automotive Global helps with know-how transfer. The success of our strategy can be gauged by the consistent improvement in performance over the years. Our EBITDA margins, PAT, free cash flows and return ratios are quite close to CIE Automotive's global benchmarks. The key, of, the key thing is consistency is what we aim for. The next section analyzes some long-term trends in the automotive industry and how we gain. As climate change takes center stage, electric vehicles or EVs are gaining traction. The pace of this transition to EVs is varying widely across regions and segments and we are in that stage of uncertainty right now. We have developed a comprehensive strategy for EVs and a selection of products that we pursue in the EV space under food categories has been shown in the presentation. Companies are increasingly expected to mine their carbon footprints and thus there is a push for localization. Air shoring also helps minimize supply chain bottlenecks. As developed nations seek to meet stringent CO2 reduction targets, some polluting processes like steel and aluminum castings are migrating to emerging ones. Lightweighting and safety are two key themes in the industry. The former will lead to a push towards materials like aluminum forgings and castings and composites, all three of which are focus areas for us. The transition to EVs, lightweighting and safety all require components with higher precision, closer tolerances and better quality. And this is where we think we can score. We think all these issues could lead to more opportunities, especially in India. The next few pages of the presentation present market statistics and forecasts from relevant sources, followed by the results submitted to uh, SEBI in the prescribed format. The CI India team is confident that it can utilize future opportunities and face future challenges with agility in order to meet the shareholders' expectation of sustainable growth and profitability. Thank you very much. I have taken a bit more time than usual. Uh, so thank you for that. And now we proceed to Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, a couple of questions from my side. One is on the EU business, uh, given that uh, um, outlook for industries expected to be limited for the next few years. 
Uh, how should we build in for new business revenues, uh, given the changes which are happening in the industry, particularly towards hybrid revenues? Uh, would there be content increase-led growth, or we would be largely mimicking underlying industry growth uh, in EU? Revenue projections in our European business, given all the changes in the market uh, so, uh, for uh, another benefit, Jinnis, and just summarizing, so what he is asking is that the market in EU, the industrial market and also the automotive market is expected to remain not grow going forward. And then there are also changes like move, move towards hybrids and LDs. So, in that context, how do we look at growth in Europe? Are we talking about stagnation or, or are we talking about an increase in content per vehicle, etc.? Okay, thank you. Yes, you, you are right, uh, this is under speaking. The evolution of the European market for the next four or five years will be flat, okay? The, uh, it will be a stagnant market in the automotive sector. Mainly, uh, they expect a 2-3% drop for 2024, and the, the remaining years, uh, absolute uh, volume of uh, car production will be around 17 million cars per year. Okay, that that is the expectation. On top of that, we have uh, in 2023 we had a 12% of electric vehicles, and this percentage of electric vehicles will go growing, probably a little bit lower than expected because uh, there was a, a huge expectation of an exponential growth in the next year. This seems that is not going to happen. Probably the electrification will go slower than than expected, at least two, three years of delay. That is what we uh, all expect. And regarding CIE fortunes, what we had this year, uh, regarding the, the growth of we, our business in, in Europe, uh, you saw that we had this 10% growth. The fortune sector grew 16%. And the uh, gear sector, I mean, Metal Castello business, drop, had a drop of 6%, okay? And this was mainly due to the uh, export of the highway, off-highway components that we are producing from Italy to to U.S., okay? So the U.S. market in the off-highway business is now in, a, let's say, in the bottom side of the cycle. So... The average is 10%, but the, the, you see that the performance of the different uh, technologies of the sectors are, are different. For the future, what we are now seeing is that our uh, new order book is, is really interesting. I mean, we are getting important uh, businesses, both in the forges and in Metal Castello, with a huge weight of the uh, electric vehicles. In this year, for example, in the fortunes, 73% of our new orders were electric vehicles, and in Metal Castello, 51% of the new orders were electric vehicles. So what we will see in the next years will be a transition from internal combustion engine components to electric fight uh, components for, for different customers. So what we expect is in that a flat scenario or flat volume, a flat evolution business with the increase of the electric vehicles, we expect to maintain our our business. So we see our future stable, and uh, we are doing. I think we are doing our job properly, and we are accomplishing the transition in a in a organized and solid manner. So. Uh, we expect to keep this business in the near future in a stable, a stable way, according to the to the market evolution. Uh, okay, so and just to clarify, uh, so are we uh, indicating that we are not expecting any material increase in content as uh, uh, EV share in our business increase? Is that the right understanding? Yeah, our EV share will increase for sure as. I told you that the new orders are coming, uh, the majority from the EV sector, but the, what we can expect at the same time is that the internal combustion engines will start the decline, okay? So 
I think our aim is to balance both uh, uh, the, the reduction and the increase and maintain or even increase a little bit our business in the in the future. So, but the the expectation is that we will be able to make this transition smoothly. Got it. And uh, secondly, uh, does this include any further ramp up in aluminium forging in Europe, uh, or this, uh, that uh, that will be worrying about or what we are talking about stable revenues? Yeah, we we have you know that we we already got certain uh, aluminium forging projects that uh, we are now launching with different customers. We also got a very important. Uh, Still, for components, but for the uh, um, battery pack for the uh, commercial vehicle, one important commercial vehicle customer. So, let's say that the, all these projects are being developed, and the, both aluminum floor 14 plus uh, steel 14 for the uh, for the commercial vehicle battery pack. I think we will see. Uh, Good growth in that sector in the future. I uh, got it. And my last question is on the cash of uh, 8.2 billion rupees. Uh, so how much of this would be in India and how much of this would be in Europe? And uh, as a as a, a follow-up question on that, uh, in case if we acquire something in India, can we access cash uh, which is lying in Europe, uh, or given the taxation uh, policies, uh, it might be difficult to uh, access that? Thank you. JP, will you please yeah. take that? <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Uh, so, next, the uh, Euro cash is all in that loan amount, which is about 45 million is the dashboard. And I don't know if you saw this topic. So we are um, getting rid of the debt in Mexico uh, by Dalfour investing in there. So, that cash will uh, knock off the debt in Mexico of about 15 million US dollars. About uh, moving money, uh, so, so we will be left with very little cash in uh, um, Europe in the immediate. Of course, the business is cash generating, so we will have to find a solution around how to get the money for acquisitions in India. We are working on that. As of now, Dinesh, we don't have a solution with, uh, which is tax efficient. Uh, India has, as, as you can see from the balance sheet, the standard loan balance sheet, something like Seven billion in cash uh, in India, so we are adequately cashed in India if we need to go for an acquisition. So I don't see an immediate challenge there, but you are right. You still need to figure out how to uh, get tax efficiently money from that form. Immediately we have found a solution for the immediate, but for the long term, yes, we are still uh, we still don't have a solution which is tax efficient. Uh, got it, got it. Thanks. A uh, few more questions, but I'll come back in queue. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move to the next question, a reminder to the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1. Next question is from the line of Mahesh Bendre from LIC Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Sir, earlier uh, we used to guide that uh, um, based on the market uh, growth, uh, will grow 5% higher than the market. So, whatever the blended growth of the market will be 5% uh, higher than that. So, what is the uh, current uh, quarter, uh, the, I think, uh, 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 performance as far as uh, this guidance is concerned? And going forward, uh, what is the outlook for this? Okay. That is it for India. Yeah. yeah. The, let's say that our business this year, this uh, last quarter grew about uh, 5%, and the... Uh, the, let's say the weighted market grew 3.9, something like that. So we, we were up, up slightly higher than the, the market growth uh, this quarter. But you are right that uh, we are below the, this 5% of, let's say, uh, higher sales that we were expecting. There, there are several reasons for this, uh, uh, let's say, limited growth that we had in, in this quarter. Mainly, the, and I would say that the, the main reason is that the delay, the delay of, of some of our main uh, big projects that we were launching in, sorry, sorry, yeah, the projects that we were launching in 
in in our different plants, okay, especially in in Porsche, uh, that we had this uh, electric vehicle businesses for Europe that has been delayed, as you all know, as, uh, and also in the in the aluminum business where we get nominated for several electric vehicle components and those projects have been delayed. So uh, we we are not concerned at all because of these delays. I mean, it's just normal delays because of the new technology entering. And okay, there are certain challenges for the customers to 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 launch these projects. Sometimes it's related to the market, but sometimes it's related to the supply chain that is not not uh, well uh, organized yet. And but we are receiving the feedback from the customers that this growth will come in the in the next quarter. So that is one of the results, especially in in in, in India. And regarding Europe, the drop is coming from the Metal Castello uh, business that I I explained in the last two quarters. We had a drop because of the cyclicality of this business for US and also in as you know in US we have the the elections at the end of the uh, the uh, year and uh, let's say all the big uh, infrastructure investments are stopped until the the new the new team uh, the new president is is elected okay so let's say that we are now in a transition period and waiting for this uh, but we are as as the order book uh, during uh, all this year has been really really good and we are now launching also additional projects we will see the the growth and the recovery coming coming soon. So, I, in my opinion, it's just a transitory situation because of different reasons. But the the I think the market is solid. The the evolution, the new projects are also coming. The interest from the customers is also very high. So we will see this this growth trend to recovery again. Um, and my and my just to add to what Andrew just said, there are two other factors which you know of course uh, that's a part of our uh, business context in which we operate. One is of course the steel price decrease this year was pretty much uh, affecting the revenues, the big um, the big amount, and uh, and uh, also the transition from old Scorpio and Bolero to new Scorpio and Bolero, where you know we have a very large uh, stampings business with m and m and that uh, that was the uh, the difference which you will not both of these you will not see much of that in c twenty four so you know of course that as i said that's a normal part of the business context in which we operate but these two factors are unfortunately have added to the various delays that Andrew talked about in C23. And it's also important to highlight that in 2022 uh, we had a growth of 28%. So we, let's say, went uh, much higher than, let's say, the, the market. This year we have uh, this 7% growth that is more or less aligned with the market, with the comments that Vikas made about the raw material decrease and uh, also the, the certain important projects that are now changing. So overall I think that this is just a transition moment that we are now accomplishing and in the in the near future we will see again the, the growth coming back to our, our business. Sure. Sir, a delay uh, at uh, ramp up uh, at uh, Bill Forge and aluminum business, was that because of the client or is it because of the uh, our limitations that we could not scale? No, it's, it's just a delay from the customer point of view. I mean, we are waiting, we are ready, we, we have all the investments and all the the machinery ready to start and there is a delay from from the customer, okay? They, they are, uh, they have their bottlenecks, not not in, in our company, it's in our other bottlenecks and we are waiting for them to solve these bottlenecks and to start the delivery. They, they promised us that uh, we will start soon uh, delivering at the maximum, at the peak level. So, this is the export, export order, sir? Yes, this is export order, yes. Export order for electric vehicles, yes. So, it's a mix. Uh, export orders for the electric vehicles is what Andrew has said. We have also talked about in aluminum is, is EV orders for domestic. So some of these EV projects is what we are observing as, as you know, you, you see in the initial remarks, uh, uh, you know, we were talking about how 
some of these easy projections are less uh, rosy compared to what it was only six months back. And we are seeing that effect in delays in some of the ramp, uh, ramp up of some of the easy projects. That's just an observation. As I said, that's really part and parcel of the business context that we have written and we expect those to start coming, you know, like uh, uh, going up, uh, going up again this year. Uh, sir, is it possible to share for C by 23 what was the export from India? Exact number we'll have to check. Uh, something like 13 percent or something like that. No, we will give you now. I mean, we are calculating, but it's between 11 to 13 percent. And sir, once this um, the orders get sorted out, do you think this will go significantly? Maybe 20 percent, maybe over the next two three years. Yes, what we see is in certain technologies, we will see this, this is for to, to go up, okay? Clearly in the cutting division, the gears are also growing, and uh, probably the portions will grow up also. We see a, a lot of demand from from the customers to export the components, but you know that with all these uh, geopolitical difficulties of, with the logistics, uh, bottlenecks that we have had in the Red Sea and so on. Uh, the, the, there is a mix, the view on, on the customers, and probably you know that our preferred route is the local to local, where we can deliver in each region uh, the, the products that we produce in each region. Okay. So, uh, sir, last question from my end. So, for this year, is it fair to assume that? Uh, uh, domestic business will grow 5% higher than the uh, our blended market? Uh, okay, I, I would say I am not optimistic with that, okay? I, yeah, I know that. No, we don't make forward-looking statements, Mayesh, but that's the guideline that we follow. Over the long term, that's the guideline in India that we have always said that we follow. You know, like, you know, as I say, CIE is a very simple, uh, you know, like, we have very simple rules. Like we said, for investment, it is 5 to 6, capex is 5 to 6 percent of sales. So for India growth, this is the kind of heuristic that we have developed for assets, you know, 5 percent plus higher than the weighted average market. So, it, it, you know, it is not, some, it is something that we try and deliver all the time. But uh, to say definitely, we will, you know, avoid definitive statements. Yeah. And uh, I'm just checking the guideline only. Just I'm holding like in the last two three quarters we have not been able to, uh, yeah. um, to come out with this kind of. Uh, so I'm just uh, asking whether we are holding up this uh, long term. Um, I mean guidance, you know, going five percent above the weighted average of the market. So are we uh, still holding it up, or there will be change for the next year? No, we are holding it, okay? We we hold it, I mean, perhaps with a delay of one quarter or, or two, but the, I think in the, in the mid-term, we will, we will go for that for sure, okay? That, that, we are quite optimistic on that. And also, I, I we checked that now the, the amount of export we had is, uh, last year was 14% of our turnover, okay? It's a little higher than the, than last year, 14. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Bharat Sid from Quest Invest. Please go ahead. Hi. Good morning, Andrew and Vikas, and thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, Vikas, or uh, Andar, I think in our presentation on Indian slide, we have found that we have approximately 50% plus clients and out of which uh, around 20 are more than 5 crore or 550 million. So there is a long tail end of 30 plus customers which is not meaningfully contributing to the whole our sales. So what are our plan to ramp up those products and generate what we are talking of growing higher than the industry rate? Yeah, of course, you know, so you have, you have, uh, you know, basically you have, uh, the answer is in the question itself. So yes, we have opportunity to grow a lot of those, uh, those customers and we are looking at growth and that's why we said this portfolio approach works. Uh, some, some of those customers will definitely become big and that is why we are confident that in the long term market for us growth would be there. 
बट इनफेड आई मीन दिस फिफ्टी प्लस कस्टमर वो हाउ इज द सेम नंबर एंड ट्वेंटी प्लस मोर देन फिफ्टी मिलियन लास्ट ईयर एंड हाउ इट हेज चेंज एंड एक्सैक्टली वेन डू वी थिंक दैट वी विल बी एबल टू रियली आई मीन ग्रो दोल फिफ्टी प्लस कस्टमर to more than 50 million uh, no, no, no. runday over 50 million is a huge target uh, that you know that in a, in a b2b kind of business that is a very 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 high uh, you know uh, high base so all that we are trying to say that is we have a very robust portfolio approach uh, so we have very good anchor customers so if you look at the customer pie also that we have presented later on you will see we have very good anchor customers who you know who are very large and we also have a large set of other businesses who are emerging with us whom we are who we are trying to grow so between a mix of these anchor customers and uh, this set of uh, emerging customers we are able to ensure both growth and profitability you know that's the point that it is simply a portfolio approach that uh, that, that 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 we are following here meaningfully when do we expect those really to and it when we will may be having our different uh, auto or two wheeler tractor or msc so if you can say some color in which segment they are sitting large by where uh, still there is a headroom to grow so no, there are lots of such new customers that we have added in the last few years you know we have talked about it in the past whether it is hyundai kia whether it is john deere whether it is royal enfield there are whole set of such customers that we have added post covid if you look at our track record from 2020 onwards you will see that this kind of customer addition has you know has accelerated during uh, during that period lot of export customers have been added also as you know as and I was talking about so so to that extent uh, who will ramp up how much will they ramp up you know that's exactly a question we can't answer as i said some will ramp up Uh, of course internally we keep looking at it but the point that we are trying to make is it's you know the, this approach gives us stability both on growth and profitability that's uh, that's what we are trying to present okay and can you throw more uh, i mean export opportunity of course i mean uh, we are always and it near sure uh, kind of a thing but still we are around 11 13% in 23 so next two three year where do we like to see kind of our export uh, of the total in your export from india so it is 14% is what under clarified okay uh, because both the domestic and export opportunities are growing so there as under explained there are two sets of contending principles that are happening you know you also have the localization principle that is working and of course you know as we explained even in our talk uh, the you know because of environmental norms there is of course a movement uh, from the developing to the emerging world in certain technologies castings aluminum over and above that we have forging and gears where we have uh, other uh, export opportunities so that is Uh, you know that was what you know uh, you know and uh, and also talked about these four businesses where we are targeting export growth and where we do see a lot lot of export opportunities coming our way in the next 3 uh, to 4 years so it is basically steel uh, and aluminum castings uh, gears and and forging in that order and would you like to give some kind of a margin side how where do we like to see in 24 india as well as europe the europe margins are consolidating around 17% ebitda and in india also it is around the same number as we say we will keep on incrementally improving it you know the cie global benchmarks are little higher than that so our you know our job is to keep moving towards those numbers as much as possible but uh, that that's what we intend to do uh, going forward but you know exact as i said 2024 we we will not give uh, our, you know a sort of forward looking statement on what the margins are going to be thank you and all the best yes thank you thank you next question is from the line of nitesh reji from cres capital please go ahead 
Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just, just wanted a clarification. Uh, so, could you please elaborate on these exports? Uh, so, is this new business or uh, you know, are we just moving uh, CI manufacturing from EU to India? And also, you know, is this CI India factory in EU or is this the CI parent factory uh, in EU? No, 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 these are new opportunities largely. As I said, it is in casting. In steel castings, steel castings, we don't have any CIE factories in Europe in any case. So we have we have coachings and gear. Some opportunity coming, you know, uh, where we are, you know, like we have a, a aligned supply chain say between the our gears business in India and Italy, and we work together to supply some of the customers. But that's a small part uh, of of the exports opportunity. Uh, please realize that CIE in Europe does very well on on margins. So it's not as if that uh, you know uh, they are uh, they are wanting on that on that aspect. So uh, largely it will be new business. Okay, got it, got it. And just uh, you know, with steel price uh, deflation which you mentioned, shouldn't margins optically uh, in fact increase? There's some impact optically will obviously be there uh, as, uh, as you know as there is an impact on. Uh, on revenues, there is a, an, an impact on margins also. Yeah, there will be some impact. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, calculating uh, EBITDA margin on like uh, in the normal way when we're not considering other income and revenue and uh, considering uh, other operating income, our EBITDA margin comes at uh, 15.3 for CY23. So, what is the outlook uh, on that? Because earlier we were expecting an expansion in this uh, EBITDA margin. But that no, we calculate it on sales, and that is the way we present it all the time. Uh, when we talk about uh, a EBITDA margin of 17%, that's on sales. That's that's the way we present the data, and you'll have to look at it from a sales perspective only, EBITDA by sales. And that we have said that the CI benchmarks are higher, you know, like, uh, and we would like to meet those benchmarks in the medium term. Is is, is what we have again a very simple rule that CA follows. That's the rule that we are following as far as uh, the margins are concerned. So when you say the medium term, that is what two to three years. Yes. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Next question is from the line of P. R. Anjan from HDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions from Adder. I mean, uh, uh, since I think around 70% of the business is broadly now coming from India, so how much time do you spend in India? I mean, because I think the Indian management or Indian team has, I mean, when the Mahindra was declining, you were saying that Mahindra was declining, that's why I am declining. When Mahindra is growing, you are saying, I mean, probably we are a little bit moving ahead of Mahindra. So what is happening with the company? I mean, I, either the consistency of the local management is not there or their focus is not there or uh, I mean you should I mean whether are you g- g- giving enough time to the local management or are you not taking cognizance of what is their underperformance in the last 10 years now I, I would say that the local management is doing fantastically well okay I think we can say that we have a very solid very professional very well aligned uh, local local management and I rely 100% on their capabilities and their knowledge. Okay, so we are, I think, a fantastic team working together and I'm spending approximately, I, I come to India every two months. Now, next week I will come in mid of April, so we review operationally and otherwise we do it uh, every month we we check every of the any of the verticals of the company here in India we we review with the management through teams uh, in a de- in detail manner okay so I think the management system is working everything is well structured I think that the team is also well aligned and the ideas the strategies and the the, the alignment of the of the team is is very clear, okay, so I'm really comfortable with with that. Then the reality of the market and sometimes some of our customers, they did better than the others and some sectors are still depressed. For example, this year the tractor sector was was 
a little bit uh, depressed and also the two wheeler except the last quarter was also affecting us but the the long term or the mid term view is is positive on top of that we are getting new orders and we are getting new projects and the collaboration between the the european and and american cie teams with the local teams is also improving so Overall, I think that the integration of the Indian business in CIE is complete. I, I would say that we are now in the better shape than we have ever been. So the, I can only be very optimistic against the, uh, uh, about the future of the, our Indian activity. Uh, it's true that the, we would like to have some more sales, some more turnover. That is probably that the the only thing that we need this year but as the projects are there and, and the customers are are confirming and they are pushing and they are telling us that they will come for sure the 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 growth will come. So let's say that we are in a very solid uh, company with a good management with all the customers also uh, supporting us because they see a very reliable company that the message that I was trying to to give during all these years working together with the local teams we need to be a solid reliable good quality good delivery company and in that sense I think we are an outstanding company in India so the customers will come and the customers will appreciate this and they are already appreciating this this in in the, in in the market. So I think that the management and the evolution of the company will be positive. And the, in CIE, we strongly believe that the growth of our in the in the near future will be mainly in in India. Probably the best country to to develop the business will be India. Perhaps and in Mexico also because the Mexico because of the situation of the U.S. is also another a growth focus, but India and Mexico will be the the winners in the next year. Uh, 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 so just to add to that, of course, uh, and has talked about the local management, I am not referred to that. So you talked about Mahindra. Uh, you know, please be assured that we are not neglecting any of us, our anchor customers. So when we say that we are diversifying, we are not diversifying at the cost of our strategic customers, not at all. We, whether it is Mahindra or Bajaj or Maruti or Tata Motors, we are extremely focused on supporting them in their growth process, and we are actually we are actually growing with them. Uh, you know, all the other efforts that you see is not at their cost. You know, that is something I need to clarify since uh, you did mention that now we are trying to move away from Mahindra. We are not. Uh, we are just adding more customers as our capabilities grow. I will again refer you back to what, you know, Ender sometimes said just before COVID in 2019. As our capabilities grow, and, and you know, he was asked that question about growth in 2019, and he said at that time, that the more capabilities we have, the more we will be able to grow. And that is what is happening. So the more capabilities we are generating, we are able to attract more customers. But please be assured that we will never neglect any of our key anchor customers. You know, we are extremely proud to work with them, all the names that I took, and we'll continue to support them in their growth journey. As far as Mahindra growth this year is concerned, I did explain because of the old uh, Scorpio and uh, Bolero transition to new Scorpio Bolero and we know that you know since the old Scorpio Bolero were old models we had uh, some uh, uh, outside stamping external stampings which are no longer made uh, which are all made in house now that is causing a drop along with the RM drop which is significant so that is causing a bit on the revenue side but rest assured we are very very strong with our anchor customers and we will continue to be strong with them and we'll continue to support them with whatever they they ask us. Yeah? Thanks, uh Okay. Okay, all the best. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Next follow up question is from the line of Jinesh Gandhi from Embed Capital. Please go ahead. 
Uh, hi, uh, so one is clarification on uh, the margin. So when you are referring to global benchmark, you are referring to 18 to 20 percent uh, EBITDA margin. Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, CIE is roughly around 18 uh, percent overall uh, overall margin, and and publicly stated they want to go ahead of 18 percent. So that's you know that's uh, the, uh, the global CEO of uh, CIE is on record uh, talking about 18 plus. Right, right. Okay. Uh, and second question pertains to the India business. So, uh, when we are talking of uh, EV related orders coming in, so uh, can you talk about how CY23 shaped up in that context? Uh, how, what percentage of our orders came from EVs, both for uh, two wheelers and passenger vehicles? So, as Anders mentioned, so in Europe it was. Uh, uh, see, the forging business of Europe was 73%. In uh, in uh, years, uh, business of Europe, it was 50%. And in India, it was roughly around 15%. Okay? So, uh, as you know, a lot of our orders in India are actually uh, not ramped up as much. So, that's okay. So, overall, uh, the portfolio, we are very, very comfortable because we already have a very significant and large portfolio in India already. So, and which we are, a lot of, lot of those we are actually waiting to ramp up. Right. And of the total order book, say, cumulated last three years, uh, would it be fair to say EV would be 10 percent of that order book as well? In India? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And more in Europe. Right. And uh, second question pertains to uh, Mahindra. Now, given that share of Mahindra has come down to uh, 31%, uh, just uh, how, how should we look at uh, m M&M, given that the new product side we have talked about having lower content because of uh, insourcing on stamping side? Uh, going forward, as we get more orders, particularly on the born electric vehicle side, uh, how would you compare content in born EVs versus uh, the newer products which we had got, for example, uh, Scorpio and uh, X3700 versus older models like uh, Thar and uh, uh, Thar and uh, Bolero that way. So, uh, can you talk about quality? Models. Bolero and Scorpio, of course, they are in a different league. Uh, we will be slightly lower than Bolero and Scorpio, but slightly higher than, you know, the other XUV500 and so on. So you know we are we are very strong with uh, with uh, with M and M on their uh, new releases both in uh, in auto and tractors. So uh, as I said, you know like uh, we we will we will support M and M. Of course, uh, the content will not match what was there on the old Bolero and Scorpio. But as you know, uh, the the uh, but all that is being compensated by the number of models that m M&M is releasing anyway. So that is not a problem, you know, because uh, the list of m M&M and platforms is now very large and we are there almost everywhere. So that, the, you know, so that is not an issue. Yeah, in fact, we are launching a new press line in May, June for Mahindra to increase our delivery to them. So in... In four or five months, we will have additional capacity to, to cope with the additional demand coming from them. So, I think there will be a growth also in Mahindra in the stamping division. Yes. Yeah. No, no. As I said, last year, there were a few things that worked against us, this, this transition. Now that, you know, all, you know, almost two-thirds is the new Bolero, new Scorpio, so that will not impact the growth and the RM is stabilizing. So, you know, like, uh, as Anders said, we are not, from a volume perspective, we are really not bothered uh, too much, uh, concerned. Let me not use the word bothered. We are very bothered. We are not concerned <laughs> uh, that uh, we will not be able to meet uh, the growth uh, growth requirements of, uh, that uh, that we have in our mind. So, C23 was a bit of an aberration that way, and, and we think we will be back on track uh, from a growth perspective. But having said that, you know, and, and this is in continuation to what Priya Ranjan had also asked, yes, on growth, we may have underwhelmed a little bit this year. On profits, we have grown, as I said, 18.4% that we pointed out. If you look at recurrent PAT in, in C23 versus recurrent PAT in C22 on a consolidated basis, the growth is 18%. 
So, uh, on every other parameter except growth, I think uh, we have done extremely well. Whether you talk, talk about our ROA, the way we calculate, I'm sure you know some of you calculate it slightly differently, but we have crossed in, in our estimation the way uh, 20% ROA consolidated figures uh, this year. So, uh, you look at our cash flow generations, look at our, our debt. So, if you look at it in, uh, in a holistic, uh, holistic way, you know, uh, yes, we do accept we have underwhelmed on growth, but on every other parameter, we have done extremely well. And even on growth, as I said, there were some factors that worked against us in C23, and I think those will be corrected in C24, be it RM, be it the transition to the new models, or be it the ramp-up delays. So this, you know, uh, you will see, uh, uh, you know, some uh, some changes, let's say, in, in the environment, in the, in, you know, in the growth, uh, in the growth story. But let me emphasize, other than that, in C23, we have done extremely well on every other parameter. Right, right. Just to uh, clarify on this, uh, you indicated that the content and bond AV models of Minecraft which are launching from next year, uh, we will be having more content than the Scorpio and XC7 develop, but lower than the older models. Uh, that's uh, no, no, that's no, the correct no, 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 no. You know, let us not get fine. I'm just saying that there are three classes. One is, of course, the newer models, XUV700 is in the newer models. Then there are extremely old models like Bolero and Scorpio, and then there are the intermediate models which are like the XUV500 and the rest, which were, you know, uh, namely three, four, five years back. So that is the difference. So among the newer models, we are lower than the extremely old models, but little higher than the, uh, the intermediate models that we were talking about. Okay, uh, but any indication on the bonding side, uh, how it will be there given uh, uh, that there will be totally new platforms and new powertrains? Uh, so right now, not all of those, uh, you know, uh, RFQs have been uh, fully uh, settled. So let you know, let them get settled, and then we'll 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 uh, we'll have more of a uh, you know indication on what is happening. Got it. Got it. Okay. Great. Thanks for all the best. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Pratik Kothari from Unique PMS. Please go ahead. Hey, hi. Good morning. Uh, uh, Sir, on a metal cast, if you can uh, highlight, I mean, last year I think we did 80 million euros. Uh, where are we this year? Uh, how is the trend, trend, trend uh, panning out? Uh, are we seeing bottoming out of what we used to uh, suffer in the U.S.? Yes, Metal Cafe Law last year, uh, as I mentioned, we started it with the first two quarters with a very strong demand and sales, but in the third and the fourth quarter, this, we saw a, a, an important drop because of the, uh, let's say, cyclicality of this sector in in U.S., especially our main customer, uh, Caterpillar, okay? Uh, we expect to be at the weak uh, volumes during the next couple of quarters until the the revamp is coming in the in the second half of the year and especially after the the elections in the USA. So we think that that is the the evolution of our Metal Castello business in the next month. Also, we have to say that we had certain new projects with other customers. Uh, especially in the electrification field that are also delayed and the, the expected ramp up of this project is, is delayed so we are waiting for that. Uh, so we are optimistic because these this electric vehicles, uh, electric com vehicle components that we are going to, to supply to the U.S. are coming for sure a little bit later than, than expected but the, the we are waiting for the ramp up from the customers. So together with the, let's say, the, the growth again in the sector, plus the new projects that we had, I think we will come back to the uh, normal, let's say the peak business where we, when we were hitting the 80 million euros turnover in, in Meta Castell, okay? So that's the, the recovery that we expect Right now, we, we can be at the pace of around 60 million, so 
uh, we will uh, see this recovery in the next quarters. So willing to get to that situation, and uh, in the meantime, we are quite, uh, let's say, working internally to improve our efficiencies and to set up the factory and preparing the factory for the growth again. Uh, uh, so, Pratik, just, to just uh, because, you know, last year was not as bad for metal cash so yeah. it was a 6% drop compared to 322, not more. Yeah. So, if you look at, you know, earlier during the call, Ander had mentioned that in Europe, overall this year, we have grown 10%. Uh, the forging business, which is roughly three-fourths, grew 16%, and metal cash uh, grew, uh, or uh, uh, declined by 6%, 6%, you know, so that. Yeah. You know that's that's that that's the number because the first quarter in metal cash flow was quite good and this year the run rate is say five to six million euros, but uh, you know it was doing about eighty million or seven million euros in 2022. Yeah. Correct. Fair enough. Uh, then uh, second question to Vikas. Uh, so 12 months back, our US tech used to be uh, for India business. India plus 10 was where we were very comfortable and confident about. Uh, obviously, this, those were estimates and guidance and future forecasts and things were, uh, uh, didn't give us this year. Uh, but it seems that our heuristic also has shifted from plus 10 to plus 5. So, um, anything to read into this, uh, how to think about this? So, no, no, 5 to 10 is what we, we used to say even then, you know, of course. Uh, it's good that you remember the higher, higher range, but it is 5 to 10 is what we used to say, that's correct. Uh, right now, given what we have done, we are saying 5% at least to start off with, that's all. But it is always 5, we have always said 5 to 10% as far as the Indian market is concerned. Look, again, I, I, am, I am reiterating, there are some factors that went against us. You know, the raw material decline has been a very big factor this year. In fact, in Europe, it is higher than even in India. So that, that factor, you know, normally if, if it is 1 or 2%, it's okay. It's a, it's a bigger number than that. Uh, so that, and as, a, as we told you about the, the shift in M&M, where, you know, we have almost 1,000 crores of stamping uh, business with M&M, 800 to 1,000 crores. And on that, that transition is happening from the old to the new models. And therefore, you know, the growth is restricted there. So if M&M grew... Uh, whatever that M&M &M auto sector grew 30% in C23, we were not able to utilize that entire 30% of the growth and Priya Ranjan also asked, you know, like that are we moving away from M&M, that's not the case. We were not able to match that 30% simply because of this transition from old to new and our sampling business, which is a very large part of the M&M business, you know, almost we are the, probably among the top sampling suppliers to M&M. &M. Uh, so, that, you know, so these two effects, if you take into account, you know, uh, and of course, as I keep saying that part of the business context, so there is no point in fretting about it. But if I adjust for these factors, we have still met that 5 to 10 percent, but that, you know, like as I said, uh, that doesn't count because for these factors are part of our business context. So if you keep these in mind, you will see that, uh, you know, our, uh, our volume performance is not... Uh, not as bad. We are not losing market share. We are not, you know, uh, you know, withdrawing from any customer or market. Nothing of that kind. Just that, as I said, as Andrew said, some of the orders didn't ramp up. There was this RM effect and there was this uh, old to new effect in our largest customer. And that's that's what you know has given that underwhelming nature to say to sales. It's not. It's as Andrew said, it's temporary. It will come back. Plus, as I said, also, uh, please, uh, you know, look at the other parameters that we have done very well on. As I said, an 18% growth in PAT. For the first time in our history, we have crossed an ROA of 20% on a consolidated basis. Uh, and so that, you know, those, those are other things that we, uh, we have done very well in uh, C23. No, fair point. Uh, just uh, two clarifications. Uh, one, we said we have 20 customers uh, in India which contribute more than 5 crores of business or 50 crores of business. So, we said total are 50 and, okay, 20 is 5 crores. 
Fibrose is a substantial number to start off with. So when you start with a new customer, that's a good uh, good number to start with. Correct. Correct. And second, so for the period of time, as Bharat Bhai was asking, you know, he he also asked that same question. You know, when it is going to ramp up? Some of them will ramp up to much bigger numbers, but not correct. all. Correct. Correct. Sure. Uh, and second, we said exports formed 14% of a business, and it was 10% last year. So it's a good 40-45% growth in exports that we observed this year. So one are these numbers correct, and what is driving this? Because this is a substantial thing. No, no, no. I think it won't be 10. I think it would have been 11, 12 uh, last year. We'll check the numbers. Yes, exports, we do ex- expect them to increase, but in select areas that, you know, that Andrew emphasized. Definitely in steel castings, where you see this trend uh, of uh, castings moving away from Europe uh, to other parts of the world. Therefore, you see that, a bit of that in aluminium castings. And of course, forgings and gears have always been strong in exports. From uh, when I say forgings, that's largely built for, always been strong. So that that will continue. So yes, there is uh, optimism around exports, but you also have to understand that there are other countervailing factors. You know, the supply chain bottlenecks. So there is a move towards near shoring. Lo- you know, like local for local, etc. So as I said, you know, these are these are things that we keep observing. But we yes, yes we are very very Expectant on exports in castings, gears, forgings, and uh, and aluminium. Yes, eleven percent. Yeah, it is eleven to fourteen. That's the number. We are confirming that. Correct. Right. Because that's a substantial jump too. No, great. Thank you and all the best. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nitish Rajay from Chris Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity again. Uh, so, could you please elaborate on your, uh, you know, inorganic opportunities now that we have uh, close to 800 crores of cash? Uh, also, you know, are we uh, focusing on any particular segment uh, capability which we want to get through this acquisition? Uh, and which ones we are currently assessing, and what would be the optimal size of this acquisition? No, optimal size, that's the easiest to answer, you know, like we don't want it to be very big or we don't want it to be very small that it doesn't move our P&L. So, it is, you know, so we do look at, you know, the two acquisitions that we have done were in the range of 600 to 1000 crores of sales, so that we think is the optimal kind. But then, you know, it depends on availability. To your other questions, where are we looking at? Of course, you know, wherever there are gaps, we have always mentioned that, for example, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, 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 we would be looking at, for example, in uh, uh, areas which are getting more prominent with light weighting. We mentioned in our talk about how light light weighting, uh, etc., are driving it. So wherever that would be happening, whether it is aluminium, whether it is plastics, or even in you know some some customer wise, if we get can get access to newer customers, so we will be looking at it. You know, m a the, the way we look at inorganic is as a sort of complement to our organic strategy. You know, it is not for growth purposes that we are attempting to do uh, inorganic. We are attempting to do to, uh, to improve our portfolio of capabilities within the company. So that would be the idea. Uh, of course, uh, right now we are not uh, at a stage where we can talk about, uh, you know, as I said, inorganic is as much part of our day-to-day activities, but, you know, at this stage there is nothing specific that can be mentioned. We will, of course, report it to uh, the concerned parties when, when any such thing happens. But, uh, but you know, as I said, we are also... We will also be careful about uh, the prospects of the value generation, so the pricing is also important. So it is pricing plus the kind of capabilities that, uh, you know, that uh, uh, that the opportunity brings to us that would decide what, uh, that we, uh, what we would do with inorganic. Okay. Um, we got it. And uh, just uh, wanted to understand what's the strategy with, uh, you know, adding sunroofs to our portfolio. Uh, we've seen recently that, you know, players like Gabriel have started uh, doing sunroofs. So, and we have all, we've been a late entrant to the India market and uh, CIE Europe already has this. So, just wanted to understand the, the strategy there. Yeah. Yes, we, we have analyzed the sunroof business that you know that this is a 
global business that came from an acquisition that CIE did in, uh, in 2019, okay? Uh, this business is a centralized business, it's a tier one and product driven business, okay? So, the, what, what we show is that all the development, all the R&D is done in a centralized uh, engineering center that is, uh, it is in, in Germany and this business has, uh, it is a completely separate uh, business in, inside the CIE, okay? It's not, it's not like a part of our technological uh, uh, organization, it's just a specific uh, roof system business and it's managed commercially, technically, R&D as a one, one uh, unit, okay? So, uh, in this moment, we don't see the, 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 the any reason to split this, this unit, okay? So, from now on, we, would, we will decide this unit will be uh, independent in CIE. It is uh, the name of, the, of this business is Golde. This is the new name that we are using for this uh, company. And it is managed uh, independently inside CIE. So uh, uh, from now on, will not be integrated in in CIE India. Okay? Despite they have one production plant in India that uh, is in in the Pune area. Okay, so we will uh, we will not be looking at introducing uh, sandals in the India business. Not 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 at all. Yeah, not in this moment. Okay, okay, okay. got it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take this as the last question for the day. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Yeah. So, as usual, thank you very much for to all the participants for the questions, well-directed questions and very clever questions. So, we hope that we answered properly and we hope that you will continue having the faith and the trust and, on our company and the good evolution of this of this uh, company. I also like to thank you to all our team here as they are fully committed to deliver the fantastic results and in the near future we will see this uh, growth and these good results happening again. So thank you very much to all of them. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.